or may not be old enough to remember a character called Mars Blackman, hypothesizing that the thing that made Michael Jordan as great as he was just had to be the shoes. Flash forward 30 years, and the show-stopping exploits of Kyrie Irving. How does he do it? So it's got to be the shirt tail. So Here's Scoop Jackson. Untucked, he goes into superhero mode. Like he knows that's his superpower. Oh, behind the back move by Irving and score! Untucked Kyrie is an alter ego. It's a superhero. When Peter Parker rips off the suit and becomes Spider-Man, when you untuck Kyrie's jersey, he becomes that superhero, that Avenger of NBA basketball. By bringing him to T'Challa, spinach to Popeye, Reggie Miller was seconds of going down. Game threes in the finals to KD. Irving puts it up. Let's go. Kyrie Irving from downtown. He turns into Super Kyrie. Crazy shots, doing impossible things. Latte for Becca, living that untucked life. Kyrie, tough shot. In that game specifically, you knew every single time that he came down the floor. It was not only was he going to get a bucket, but he was going to make a mockery of every single person guarding him. And I swear it's only because he feels he's loose because that jersey is untucked. Untucked equals unguardable. Untucked means unstoppable. I haven't found one NBA player yet that has been able to stop untucked Kyrie, but even LeBron, the Warriors. The only person who can stop untucked Kyrie is either Uncle Drew or another untucked Kyrie guarding him. Go untucked, become a hero. I feel you, Kyrie. I feel you. Scoop, you're silly. Now, of course, the NBA does not endorse the untucking of any article of clothing unless it happens during normal game action. So. For Kyrie and the Celtics, that's sort of been the issue. The Celtics are one and six in their last seven with Kyrie, six and one in their last seven without, and that is regardless, regardless of the status of one's jersey. Paul, talk to me about the system, the offensive system that will really showcase Kyrie as a winner. I think we've already saw that in Cleveland, you know, where he didn't have to be the main guy. You know, I, I truly believe where if you create a system where Kyrie doesn't have to be the, the leading scorer, he can be that 1B one, one guy. You know, that's a system that we saw him be very successful in. Now all the pressure's on him, all the defense, all the scout report is just all about Kyrie. You know, and it's tough for a small guard to lead a team to a championship. So hmm. if you can put him in a system to where maybe you have that other player who can be that he's a one leading B. scorer. I think he's a 1B oh, on a championship team because he's already shown that. So maybe if one of these other Celtics can emerge as a 1A, a la Jason Tatum. So Kyrie's not good enough to be the best player on a championship team is basically what you're saying. But my belief always, Johnson, you know this. I don't believe you're a point guard unless you're an all-time point guard, a la Magic. Uh, you're looking Isaiah. at me saying this. Steph you're looking Curry. At, you're looking at me saying this. Huh? Rare, rare case. 2004. Rare case. Uh, you and Tony it. Parker. Outside of that, Magic, Isaiah, Steph Curry, all-time guards. I don't think need to be your best, can be your best player to win a championship. So, so I mean, I'm with you on this. So basically you're saying Steph is on a level. Yes. Kyrie isn't. All time. We already put Steph Curry on okay. a top three or four all time oh, point well, guard status. And that begs the question. He is going to be a free agent. Mm -hmm. We put the numbers up with and without him on the court. What do you do if you're Boston? 
To me, it's, it's twofold because you can't, we, we talk about his greatness, right? Yeah. You can't just get that kind of talent anywhere. He's one of the greatest, Without a doubt. most talented point guards we've Without ever seen. Doubt. However, I do think if they go a different direction, they can be successful without Kyrie. I believe that as well. So <clears throat> it, it's twofold, in, in my opinion. You still need a superstar to win in this league. Kyrie is a superstar. You yes. need that. There's no way you win in this league without having that. Every final shows it. You need a top five player. So I got a question for you, Paul, Mr. Celtic. You can answer it, too. <laughs> if you're Boston, if you had an opportunity to keep Kyrie or you have a shot at Anthony Davis, what do you do? Anthony Davis. No, I no. have to lean toward Anthony Davis because okay. he... So they can go another route... And what still be you successful. need to win a championship. He is a top five player. A player that you need to win a championship well, in this league. I mean, that could well, history has shown that. So Outside of what you did in Detroit, Houston. I mean, uh, Detroit and San Antonio with Tony Parker. I got you. It, it's, it, it, doesn't, it just doesn't but get But what done. you guys are acknowledging, and rightfully so, that there's levels to this. So there's all-star players. They're all NBA players. They're MVP-level players, and they're all-time great players. Yes. And so we kind of just slotted Kyrie. Here's the kind of issue that he's had in Boston. He, he came to a turnkey situation, had the most rings, people perceived the best GM, the best coach, the best young talent, and also the best assets for the draft. And he seems miserable there. Right. And so when they're a fifth seed, I feel like this is going to be a final season playing with that squad regardless of what the Celtics want to do. New pastures. Well, he's not done yet because he will be facing LeBron. Celtics, Lakers highlight next week's NBA Saturday primetime game presented by Hyperx Gaming. Uh, obviously, both teams struggling lately. It's an important matchup. Must win for one. Our coverage tips with NBA countdown at 8, 5 Pacific on ABC. And as always, you can watch it on the app. Let's check out who is playing with confidence. Brought to you by Toyota. It's Clint Capella returning with confidence. The last five games, 12 points, 12 boards, and a 4-1 and one record. Oh, we got a backup pair of those earbuds. You always lose them at least once. Crossover. Got it. Harden with a step back three. Got another one. Shake and bake. And throws it. Now the crossover. Now you're frozen. Kyrie Irving putting on a show. the crowd. That's what he does so well. Time to go courtside for Rockets Celtics. So James Harden's lowest shooting percentage happens to be against the Celtics, Jalen. What is it that they do that does that for him? You are your skill set, Michelle Beadle. When I look at the Boston Celtics, I notice something. They have locked down defenders on the perimeter. Marcus Smart comes to mind, Jalen Brown. When he runs pick and roll actions, Al Horford is one of the better bigs of containing pick and roll ball handlers. So the Celtics do a really good job of making him play in the crowd. And on the opposite side of that spectrum, Paul Kyrie happens to average his second most against any team against the Rockets. You expect another good game? Yeah, he always shows up in these type of games, especially on national television. I expect him to really step up tonight, but. I don't see him scoring 26 to 30 points tonight. I think he's going to do a better job today of getting his teammates involved. Look to him to get double digits assist today. Ooh, I'm gonna, double digits. I'm going to look to Paul. I'm glad you said that. I'm going to look to Paul Pierce for a last minute wager for us, please. And thank you. Kyrie, how many assists will Kyrie have today? 13. Eight. Seven. I'm going nine. Eleven. 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 Let's Take go it now. easy, Kyrie. We'll the Rocket Celtics. I'm so yeah. low key that you might not see me was favored to repeat as MVP. Then he maybe was it. Then he hung 58 points on Miami Thursday night. James Harden is in Boston. And it's crunch time for Kyrie Irving and the Celtics, still trying to put together a championship lineup. The playoff clock is ticking louder and louder on both of these stars. Yeah, fella carrying that fool like a football. Fear can frustrate with reckless efficiency. Harden and one. Count four. Uncle Drew innovates with video game type moves. The backboard sorcery! Do you have any idea how hard the shot is that he just made? But to win the title, you need a bit of magic. To be fearless with all rivals, ignite a revolution, and drill big shots. Harden, Kyrie. This is what we wanted, two of the best going at it! Playoff progression continues. Rockets Celtics next.
Welcome to NBA Countdown, presented by Straight Talk Wireless. I can read a little bit. The big three, represented, <laughs> of course, bit. John Phillips, Jalen Rose, Paul Pierce. My name's Michelle Beadle. Two of the best offensive players in the league go head to head this afternoon. Impending free agent Kyrie Irving for the Celtics, MVP candidate James Harden for the Rockets. Their teams are both running a somewhat disappointing fifth in their conferences and both seen as capable of so much more. Let's tackle the Celtics first. They finished February 5 and 6, only two wins in the last eight games. They finished uh, ranked 17th in net rating behind Minnesota and Chicago. And Celtics co-owner Whit Grosbeck said Saturday that this has been, quote, the worst February he can remember, Paul. Do you agree? I don't agree. Because in 2006, 2007, <laughs> that was in the middle of our 18-game losing streak. <laughs> which we didn't, I lost for which, the whole month. <laughs> which, <laughs> I think we lost for the whole month, which we didn't make the playoffs. At least this team is going somewhere, and they have time to turn it around. That's fair. We, so much is being talked about struggles, who's fault, who's what. We don't hear a lot about Brad Stevens. Where does he stand as far as the, the blame is concerned? Well, look, we, I think we all anointed uh, Brad Stevens best coach in the, in the league too early the last couple of years um, and he is a terrific terrific coach and he deserves some of the responsibility but here's what i love one of the many things that i love actually about coach stevens he steps up and raises his hand and i've heard him several times this year say listen it's my fault i have to be better and i just haven't done a good job with this group i love that and as a player if i was on that team i, I you know i love a guy that can raise his hand and say I got to be better. As the leader, he does that, and it should, you know, it should, it should wash down through the rest of, of the players, but it hasn't thus far. But I love Coach Stevens for that. I want to show the standings before I ask you something, Jalen, real quick, as far as the East is concerned right now. They are fifth. Uh, they do have an opportunity to move up as high as possibly third. Westgate right now has them at a 14-1 to odds to win the title, 3-1 to to come out of the East, and obviously there are many teams that are in that running, Jalen. Where do you have Boston amongst them? I'm done making excuses for Paul Pierce's talent-laden <laughs> wow. Boston Celtics that have underachieved the entire year. I felt like many people, when you add Kyrie and Gordon Hayward to a team to make it to conference finals, they should be ready to take the next leap. Michelle Beadle, mm -hmm. right now, I feel like the Boston Celtics, the best thing that's happened to them is that Oladipo got injured. That's how I feel about the Celtics, because they're not on the level of the Bucks, not on the level of the Raptors. Even though they've owned the Sixers, I feel like the Sixers will have their way in the playoff or should be favorite. So these Celtics, I feel like, will not meet expectations. Well, the reason they're not at the level they're supposed to be at, two things. Kyrie, if the Celtics were going to be a contender in the East, he would have had to turn into an MVP candidate, a top five MVP candidate, which he is not in that category right now. Another thing, huh. we would have had to see Jason Tatum or, even, or maybe even Jalen Brown emerge into an all-star. So if those things had to happen this year, Best believe the Celtics will be right where people predicted them to be, and that would be at the top of the East. But those guys didn't take that step, that leap this year. And Al, that's why they're at where they're at. And Al Horford was an all-star last year, but he's not. A lot of people predicted four all-stars for the Celtics before the season. We, we're not I saying did. that. Oh, you know what? I, I like did. you admit that. That's I very did. good of you. A lot of people did. You're not the only one. Can we get some happy birthdays? Sing them. Sing it. Second. Happy birthday we, we, I was going to say, we're going to get Stevie Wonder Wonder. Happy birthday. Officially yeah. drinking age today. Happy one. birthday. In the Rockets. Happy that don't sound like a Motown Detroit voice, Jalen. <laughs> that was really <laughs> awful. Uh, and do the Rockets now have two gears to success? The details next on if Houston is better moving the ball or with Harden making all the moves. Get down on it. VP, but how does how you feel about a repeat performance? Rachel Nichols got to ask him about it in our Straight Talk soundbite. You have said that you want the MVP again yeah. this season. Make your case to me. Why do you deserve it? What do you mean? Just, just look at all what, what, I've, what we've had to, go, had to go through when you put, you know, any other guy in the situation that I've been in and they probably wouldn't be here in the same situation, you know, and so we got a, we got a chance to get to that uh, you know, top three seed in the West, which we all know how, how difficult that is. Um, but I mean, I, that conversation of being in the MVP is something that I that's my goal every year, and it's been the goal since the last you know five years. Fair enough. Not everyone will admit that um, he wants another MVP. Who's your choice right now? 
James Harden, you don't have to tell everybody what you're doing. We're watching it. I got the beard. Okay. Well, I agree with everything Harden is saying. I have to go with Giannis for the simple fact no one had Milwaukee being at the top of not only the East but the league at this point in the season. I agree. I know where you're going, but it's not a, necessarily a team award, though you got to factor winning in. And I like to think about the Heisman Trophy. For me, Harden has had more wild moments. Hmm. Okay, like 50-point games with 10 assists, 40-point games, the 30-point streaks. So I think he's had to do something that made it more a little more outstanding. But they're 1A and 1B. Yes, the judge. But we Absolutely. based this award over the years based on team performance and individual performance, and they go hand in hand. Based on the criteria, best team, best player. I'm just saying. Well, I want to stick with the Rockets for a second because obviously CP3 and Capella have both returned and yeah. they have improved. How exactly, Chauncey? You know, in so many ways, Beads, but um, we, we were very critical of this team early on. I mean, really, were they were really, really underachieving. They started to pick it up. We'll go to the, to the tape right here for the court vision, but they've made a 100-degree turn in terms of the spirit of the team. And here's how. Rockets ball movement. Now, a lot. Of, look at James. He advances the ball right here, but a lot of times he gets that outlet and nobody else touches the ball. Well, there's been a shift now. Look how many passes they make. Chris Paul gets into the middle of the paint where he can obviously knock down that shot, but swing, swing. And now you get it to James when he can ISO real quick when the defense can't come and double team. They move in the basketball. That's seven passes on one play. We haven't seen them do that. Now you look at multiple efforts defensively. You look at the switch right there. Now you look at Eric Gordon coming over to help right there. Nice job by Manimal taking away that baseline pass. P.J. helps him. James helps him. And now Chris does a good job of contesting without fouling, and they collect a rebound. That's seven efforts. And the Beard, the most interesting offensive player in the world. <laughs> he gets in his bag right here. Now, if all else fails, just give the Beard the ball. And he can go get you 60 on any given night. So the spirit of this team has changed with them just being not only cohesive, but sharing the basketball and being unselfish on both ends of the floor. <laughs> okay. Sharing like the basketball. It. That's why James got the, the most dribbles in the league history. <laughs> yeah, and you've seen seven passes right there. <laughs> that's, that's the, he did that's, show you that. That's a team high. <laughs> Wait, no, that's, ask, that's what they've been doing is lately. Where, if they're going to threaten the league, if they're going to really – pose a, a threat to this Golden State Warriors team and then moving on after that. Would you rather see a team that has Harden scoring 40, 50, even 60 points, as you said, or the more balanced option? 40 points plus. This is what, when they're at their best. This is what they've been doing all year. This is what the team system is. This is what they're accustomed to. The team is 17 and 6 when he scores 40 plus. Do you know what they are when, they, when he scores under 40? The team is only 18 and 17. So right there tells you they're a better team when he's out there getting buckets. These finals MVPs know this as well as anyone. <clears throat> what you're able to do in the regular season, what you're able to do in the postseason are way different. Well, and so you can get away with that iso ball, leading the league in dribbles, and all of that stuff. But in the playoffs, teams are going to lock in. It's the team dynamic. you got to swing the ball back and forth like Chauncey just broke down. Chris Paul has to be a factor. When they were at their best last year, like both of these guys were flirting with 10 assists on a nightly basis. The Manimal has really helped them out a lot, Kenneth Fareed. But I think James Harden has to rely on the guys around him to make the game a lot easier. Well, let's, I just don't see how you change your style of play once the playoffs start, though. This is how they play. Well, I want to throw the standings up there as a reminder. Um, the Rockets right now, a game out of third, uh, along with Utah, hottest team in the conference over the last 10 games, including four straight wins. And they, just like their, uh, their opponent today, 14-1 odds to win it all, fourth best in the NBA, Jalen Denver. Denver's had a great season, a little sluggish lately. You've got OKC, who's lost four in a row. Paul George, a little dinged up. Right now, how would you rank this Rockets squad? I, I think the Rockets and OKC are the two teams I give the best chance to up in the Golden State Warriors or take them to a long series because they both have two savvy veterans that they can rely on. That one, each team has an MVP, and then obviously you have Chris Paul and Paul George now playing at an MVP level. So I trust them in the playoffs. For the Nuggets, to me, it's going to be a lot to do with home court advantage and matchups if they're able to possibly make it to the conference finals. Mr. Defense, you're the Celtics today <laughs> on defense. What do you take away or what do you try to take away from the game? Well, you have to show James Harden some different coverages. First of all, you have to trap him sometimes. 
You have to sometimes just run a guy at him. He ISO. Sometimes, a lot of times when he gets trapped in a pick and roll, he just won't call a pick and roll. So he'll ISO. And if that happens, you have to fire a guy at him, which means just run a guy at him, no matter where that guy's coming from, just to make him think something different. Because as Paul said, when he gets 40, hmm. you're in trouble. You're in trouble. And he can get 40 on any given night. Not let him get 40. Seems simple. Uh, Sports Center tonight on ESPN after LAFC Sporting Kansas City with Steve Levy and John Anderson. Breaking down the NCAA field from top to bubble. Moments from soccer's opening weekend, MLS. And Antonio Brown reveals how his relationship with the Steelers soured. Oh, I think we know. Sports Center, 1030 <laughs> Eastern on ESPN and the app. Coming up, Kyrie Irving is the most clutch player in the league. But is it more style than skill? Scoop Jackson gets all caffeinated talks about Kyrie's trend. He breaks it down. Chris Paul passing Carl Malone for 10th on the all-time steals list on Thursday. Next on the list, Spurs legend Alvin Robertson. Hey, he had a mean dice game. It's nothing. Performance. Bucks traveling to Utah to take on the Jazz in the NBA. Bucks starters, on average, have a height of over 6'10". It was the tallest lineup we've seen since 2003, and they took full advantage. Bucks with the steal, and then Giannis on the other end. You know what's coming. You know what's coming. It'd be great if you did a layup. I wouldn't have said you know what's coming. Bucks force another turnover here. You know what's coming here as well. Giannis. Wasn't Travel. even wasn't even supposed to play. At least it was questionable to play with some right foot soreness. So the big five for the Bucks outscored the Jazz by 26 when they were all on the floor. Bucks up in the fourth, though. Giannis drives. Rudy Gobert said he kicked my butt. Oh! Giannis was brilliant. 43 points, 14 rebounds in 32 minutes. Bucks led by as much as 17 in the fourth. Teams, Matt, 403 in this position entering last night. Donovan Mitchell took over from there. Watch this dart here to Jay Crowder. He pops. Jazz up by one. Mitchell said, down 17. I said to the team, we got nothing to lose. Let's go. And go they did. Mitchell, again, he went full NBA 2K mode. He's got over 40 points now. He called this the best regular season game of his entire career. Jazz go on a 17-3 run in the fourth quarter and then probably come back and beat the best team in the NBA. So Jazz fans, Matt, waking up with a little history on their side. Lakers fans like, just wake me up when this stretch is over. Yeah, I think it's a perfect place to start half-hour headlines. That big win by the Jazz. And if we're being fair, things haven't been great for LeBron and the Lakers the last couple of months. Uh, losing to the Suns is a whole different type of struggle. A 118-109 defeat to the league's worst team is a hole that the Lakers may not be able to dig out of. The loss dropped the Lakers to 30-33 and 33 as they chased the Clippers for the eighth and final playoff spot. It's the worst team, statistically speaking, that's ever beaten LeBron. 19 games remain, and losing to a team with 13 wins doesn't help L.A. Luke and LeBron. We need to, we need to be better. We need to be a lot better. Uh, I am... I'm happy with the fight they we showed in the fourth quarter, but that's where we're at in the season. That's the that's the desperation that uh, we need to start the game with. And we can't keep looking at the standings. The standings are going to be what they are, no matter what, no matter if you win or lose. Hey, I've never been one to kind of look at the standings. I mean, you've known me for a while, I don't, so you just got to go out and do your job and try to do it at a high level throughout 48 minutes, and and then see what what, what happens at the end of that. How do you guys turn this around? Uh, I'm honestly not even sure. Um, you know, obviously there's something wrong with this team, and, you know, it's up to us to try to fix it, but um, not really sure right now. So let's break down the Lakers' playoff chances, shall we? With the loss to Phoenix, the Lakers now have less than 1% chance to make the playoffs. That, according to BPI, if that wasn't bad enough, they have the fifth toughest remaining schedule in the league. Well, the Warriors, they widened the gap in the West after beating the Sixers in kind of a weird one for Steph Curry, who was in foul trouble, sat out most of the third quarter before coming back in the fourth and finishing with 28 points in the win. A win that the Dubs are not downplaying by any measure. Having lost two in a row, um, being without Clay, without Loon, playing against a great team on the road, definitely one of the best wins of the year. These feel-good kind, of, kind of games where you just figure out how to win, it's very kind of playoff-esque, and you want to build that kind of mentality and expectation down the stretch of the season. Everybody, like, lives and dies with every single, it's dramatic. And it can't be for me. It can't be for me. There's so much good that came out of this game. And we got Joel Embiid coming.